So you have a hard time understanding your sonar and how to use it? Stay tuned. I'm going to show you in this four-part series how to use it and how to understand it. Everybody, this is going to be the first part of a four-part series where I talk about sonar, uh, how to use them, how to interpret what you're seeing on your screen, what to look for on your screen when you're trying to find structure or fish holding areas. And this, this one episode is going to be about the basics of sonar, how it works and how it gets a signal from the transducer to show it on the screen and so you can see it. Um, Sonar, regular 2D sonar, is nothing but a cone. It's a signal, a sound signal that's sent down to the bottom and it returns back. Or from anything that returns in between the bottom and the transducer. It's a cone shape signal. So, for instance, the most popular two are a 200 kilohertz and an 83 kilohertz. Now, the 200 kilohertz is a narrow beam and it's a three for one. For every three foot of depth, it's only one foot of cone. So for, let's say six foot of water, you're only looking at two foot of cone, two foot of bottom area. Uh, nine foot, you're only looking at three foot of area. And so it's a very narrow beam, especially if you're fishing shallow water, uh, you're not looking at much area. But at 83 kilohertz is a wider beam it's a one for one for every one foot of depth you're looking at one foot of, of cone so you get more coverage area but the returns are kind of mushy they're not they're not a good target separation the higher frequency of the 200 kilohertz gives you a lot more target separation meaning let's say you got a fish here and a fish here well, on 83 kilohertz it's gonna look like a blob but on 200, it's going to show you two distinct fish arches. And so you have a target separation there. Uh, that's what the higher frequency gets you. Now, the benefits to the lower frequencies are they go deeper. You know, 200, you may think that, oh, well, 200, it's more power, it should go deeper. It doesn't. Two, the kilohertz is only the frequency of the sound waves and, and water absorbs sound waves higher frequencies a lot faster than lower frequencies just as in okay let's say you hear down the street somebody's got that boom on their on the radio in their car you hear it way down the street the boom 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 but you don't hear the talking you don't hear the higher frequencies not until they get closer it's the same for us the lower frequencies we can hear further. This, the louder frequencies, the higher frequencies, we can't. So the water absorbs them a lot faster. So 200 kilohertz doesn't go too deep. Now, when I say too deep, 100 foot of water it still reads. You know, 150 foot it still reads. I'm talking you 300 foot or more, you have to go to 83 kilohertz. And so. It's for all any of us fishing here in these rivers, 200 kilohertz is fine. It'll read the bottom and it'll give you good target separation. Now, chirp sonar. High chirp and medium chirp and low chirp. Okay, just like in the, the kilohertz, on, on 200 kilohertz, you just send a one 200 kilohertz ping each time. That's what goes down and comes back. On high chirp, you'll have anywhere from say 130 kilohertz to 210 kilohertz. Every one of those beams, every kilohertz along there, gets sent at the same time. So you have a lot, a lot of beams going at one time and coming back. So you have, in theory, you have, you have still have the target separation with the width of a lower frequency and you get more information back. You're supposed to be, you get a lot clearer image on your, on your sonar. 
personally, I'm gonna tell you right now, personally, if I'm on my front and I'm vertical jigging, I prefer 200 kilohertz over high chirp. I just don't think that the high chirp gives me a better, it gives me too much information. I'd rather just a 200 kilohertz, or if I'm having trouble with a lot of wind, but this is gonna be in advanced courses, but if I'm having trouble with a lot of wind, I'll do a split screen, 200 kilohertz and 83 kilohertz, so I can have both of them. But I think the 200 kilohertz, when I'm fishing, is better. I think riding around, I prefer the high chirp. It gives me a little more information. I'm not looking for a crystal clear image on my son on my screen. But I'm looking for a good image, but not crystal clear. So it gives me more information, and I can see more. So medium chirp is basically 73 kilohertz, around 73 kilohertz, up to almost 100 kilohertz, and it's that range just like on high chirp it's all of those in there it's going to get sent at one time so once again you have more returns more information uh, but like i said i personally don't feel like if you just have 200 kilohertz regular sonar don't feel like you're behind the eight ball you're not you know high chirp is not all of that especially when you're fishing with it now, when the transducer receives the signal from, from the bottom, it returns up, it comes in and comes to your graph. What you see on your graph is not exactly real time. It's, there is a delay. There is a way that you can fix that delay, and I'm going to show you later in part three how to fix that, how to change that to where you can see a real time image. But, just keep in mind, when you see it come up on your screen, there is a delay. So if you're idling at, say, 5 miles an hour and you see a fish, that fish is a good 10, 20 foot back there. So just understand that when you're receiving the signals, it is a delay. Now, and I'm seeing here, I'm getting, this exposure's getting dark. I'm sorry if the exposure's getting dark and light. The sun is coming in and out and it's driving me nuts. I can't. I can't fix it. I gotta put on a filter or not put on a filter. So I hope you guys, it goes in and out. See, it's getting bright again. It's getting good exposure. So now that I explained sonar, sonar is a cone. It's just a basic cone going down. Side imaging, down imaging, or like Lawrence calls it structure scan and I think Garmin calls it something else a uh, live view or something or real real view I don't know uh, on that on imaging sonar it is a beam that goes out it's a really high frequency beam that goes out and it's like a it's like a knife edge beam uh, your your down sonar is basically a one for one, or your down imaging is a one for one, just like 83 kilohertz. For one foot of depth, you get one foot of cone or beam. So, and then the beam in the center is your down imaging right here. The side beam goes exactly from there out. So you get full coverage from one side all the way to the other side when you're using your side imaging and down imaging at the same time. There, the benefits to this is it gives you a picture perfect image of what's down there. When you're moving, not when you're staying still, you have to be moving for it to be a really good image. It's gonna get long and drawn out and blurred if, it's, if you're sitting still. If you're moving, you get a crystal clear image because you only get one beam hitting that object. Say, okay, let's say you have a tree sitting here. Your beams come across it like that. You see this tree perfectly. You see the side of it. On sonar, it's going to be more of a blob. And I'm going to explain that here in a minute. But, you know, another example, a boat. If there's a boat underwater, a sunken boat, you're cutting slices of it, almost like a, a CAT scan, I think they call it. You're cutting slices of that boat all the way across. 
and it puts all those together and gives you the picture perfect image on sonar it's going to be more of a blob it's going to look just like a blob down there that's why you don't you can't tell branches of of trees the underwater with sonar but you can with down imaging and this is caused by the cone uh, the same reason you have fish arches is caused by the cone the cone uh, let's see all right let's say this cup is a tree or just a post sticking up off the bottom when you go over with sonar regular 2d sonar the sonar cone is starting to hit it over here and it's bouncing the signals here and then as it goes across it's hitting it here and then it's hitting it here as you go past it well when it prints it onto your screen it just shows a big old blob because it kept it got so much information of it as it went across your side imaging is just going to cut a straight beam across it each time and you're going to get the perfect side print of it on your screen. Uh, so, same with your down imaging. It's going to go beam, beam, beam like that. And it'll print a perfect image of this on the water. Um, same with a, a, a bush on the water. You know, the sonar's hitting all the branches from every different angle and it's just causing a big blob. But in in imaging, it's just cutting slices of it and it shows a detailed picture of it. Also, fish arches. This is caused by the fish is swimming and your sonar cone starts to hit the fish over here. And then as it gets over the top, it actually seems shallower to the sonar because it's a shorter distance from your transducer to the outside of the cone as it is from the transducer to the center of the cone so as the fish comes through the cone it creates an arch almost like he was shallower and then it goes back down as he goes out of the cone because it's a further distance for the sonar return so you get the arch image and when you get different color images that's telling you where he is in the cone also the, the shape of the arch if it's a big arch he's coming right through the middle of the cone you're gonna see yellow uh, red and yellow inside of the arch meaning he's right below you it's a hard return and, and you generally it's a bigger fish the more yellow you see the bigger the fish it is now if it's more of a flat arch and more blue and a slight red in it well that fish is towards the edge of the cone because he's only hitting the outside edge of the cone and passing through that so it's not a bigger change of depth it's I know this is hard to, for some people to understand I apologize uh, I'm doing, trying to do my best on it but sonar once you figure it out once you learn it I, I, I tell you to do this and this helped me a lot when I learned it I used my down imaging right next to my sonar and it just started to make perfect sense I was like well that's a branch and that's a blob that blobs the branch it was simple so try that out put your sonar next to your side your down imaging and check and see you can distinguish things a lot better um, I do not recommend that you just get rid of sonar altogether and just do down imaging I do not recommend that because down imaging is hard to tell a fish uh, side imaging too it's it you see rice dots it's a little easier on on side imaging but you can see dots of fish depending on how far out you're looking it'll be a dot or a little bit bigger if you're closer and you'll see the shadow behind it on the side imaging but down imaging it gives you just a a dot that's that fish well with sonar you get the arch it's a lot easier to see fish with sonar than with down imaging 
that's what I'm trying to say. Do not get rid of your sonar altogether. When I'm on my bow, I don't look at down imaging or side imaging. I look at sonar all the time. Sonar and charts sometimes. But I don't look at my down imaging up there. All I want to see is my sonar because that tells me to fish. So, and it tells me what they're doing. You can see the fish stay under you if you're staying still and you see that line underneath you. That means there's a fish staying right there. You'll see it kind of disappear as he swims off. It kind of goes down and disappears. He's swimming off. He's not going down to the bottom, he's just swimming off. I hope I'm explaining it good enough for you guys. You know, please comment if I'm not, if I need to, if I should say something different. I hope it's all making sense to you guys. That's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, for the basics of sonar and how it works. Next episode in this series is going to be about the charts. Using new charts, how to make new charts, and for offshore fishing, basically. So... Stay tuned for the next episode in this series. Till next time, y'all, be careful and have fun.